don't have normal conversations. <laughs> yeah. So I have, I have gonna, abnormal. What's the plan? What are we gonna do? Whatever we're oh, doing. Oh, it's already recording. So it's recording. It's just like people. Oh, we're recording. Yeah, it's just a, I like to give it's people very, that that feeling like they're in the room. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm acknowledging my oh, this clients. Is my first, this is hey, my guys. first experience. So. First Enzel experience? This is my first yeah. Enzel experience. Nice. So. Hey, you're nice. in for a treat. I, expect, I hear a lot of good things, so I yeah. expect to be impressed. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So on the board here, got a case study. I got Chris in the house. What's I up, got guys? Seb in the background and new friend Tyler. Come uh, and say hi. Come and say hi. Yeah, you got to well pop your head in. Welcome. We What's going on, everybody? How you doing? All right. Sweet. So that's Ooh. who's in the house right now. And we are having another discussion. So just so you know, Chris and I and Seb, we were uh, having a lunch yesterday. By the time this video goes out, probably be like a month out from now, maybe. Maybe on your channel. I turned these things around. I know. You're good. <laughs> you're really good. Me, it takes a little while. I, like, I'm very methodical with my stuff. But I got to get... I gotta get off no, now. I good. just gotta like pump it out. I'm just ready, fire in. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you know, honestly, when I watch your content, like, how much editing really goes into it? Like, is there a lot? Because it no, looks pretty. I simple. don't. Like, I don't really have them cut. But anything. yeah, I quality. like to have them add in animations and some text and some focus points. But like, I, it's pretty much the equivalent of a live because I don't yeah. really cut anything. Yeah, I just have them add fun stuff too and I always like film a like a an intro right. like a hook that that you know helps I've seen you and Kayla do that and I'm trying to like mm. copy that a little bit where it's like you're already in the conversation mm -hmm. and I'm like what is he talking about and then he like and then it rewinds I'm like mm -hmm. oh okay mm -hmm. but it made me stay and that's the key part right and like, I've started doing it now actually and it's it's if you look at my analytics because we're analytic nerds I'm sure like if you look at the analytics, it's it's helped a lot recently where I've stopped even taking a clip and I've started just filming the video, getting done the video, and then after I'm done the video, so I know what I just talked about, I know what the whole summary of the, of the video was about, and then I'll take 30 seconds to 60 seconds and record and, and I'll do the intro based on what I know they're gonna learn, what I, I know they're gonna see, and a couple of the points that I know they're gonna be able to take away from it. And just hammer them like with that at the beginning to like really let them know like what they're in for i like that. um make a call to action to subscribe to the channel and stuff like that yeah. our subscription our the amount of subscribers has gone up 50 percent a month where are you at now we're at like twenty one thousand. oh yeah but but yeah, like the monthly i was getting like 600 new subscribers a month okay now we're at like 950. that's and, and that was the only change i made i like that so i like that one thing i've been doing with my audience is um some finance uh, i call it financial content creator case studies mm, where cool. i'm like analyzing other content creators saying like okay look at chris kirkpatrick he posts x amount of times this is just an outsider looking in from what i can see and i can usually see all your stuff lot. yeah the analytics <laughs> i can see how many views subscribers all good stuff i have yeah. uh that one i got the two buddy yeah and so i'm just like comparing i'm like look this is when he started yeah. That's where he is, and then I guess people's income based on uh, subscribers, and just to uh, show the potential. Yeah. Or I'm like, look at the potential. Even if he's doing a portion of this, the, the, the do you like, have a lot of uh, agents, advisors that that watch your channel? I want to say I have people that want to become okay. agents that are cool. like, you know what, this might be a stream of income I mm -hmm. should look into. So yeah. it's more of the people who are like getting into the space, yeah. and then I usually that's like cool. show them where to get licensed or who well and that's and that's that's a cool thing we were talking about it talking about it yesterday about like the growth and the journey and like how what we thought when we first got into the business and what we think now and like it's it's just this constant learning process yeah. right and um i think what's what's cool about it and i've been telling all of the agents on our team you need to go start a youtube channel yeah. even if you don't like get twenty thousand followers or whatever you need to start a youtube channel and the reason is because the best way to learn is to teach and I like people ask me all the time, how do you come up with content? How do you know so much about all these things? It's like, I promise you if, you, if you commit to doing, you don't have to do a video every single day like I do, but if you commit to doing two videos a week, you're going to force yourself to be in it and learning it yeah. and knowing it. And you're going to teach yourself to teach other people 
and it's gonna build your level of proficiency. And as you do it, you're gonna get better on camera, you're gonna get better at the way you communicate with clients because you're gonna be speaking about it all the time. It does nothing but make you better. It's not about monetizing your YouTube channel, getting leads. If you didn't, if neither of those two things ever happen for you, your business is still gonna benefit. Big time. You know? Yeah. And it forces you to stay sharp. Totally. You know I'm saying like, yep. I, I'm like constantly sharp because I just like these numbers right here is literally a client I spoke with today. Now I'm throwing it on the board. Now I'm talking nice. about it. Exactly. And then by the time it goes out, I already, done, I already did 50 case study videos, so it's mm -hmm. like I'm always aware and what's changing. Okay, rates are changing, Love HELOC it. rates are going up, and stuff like that. So totally. with that being said, um, when it comes to the velocity banking concept, <laughs> just the industry, uh, yeah. what has been your experience, good and bad, like over the years, uh, or if it's just something you're totally like... You know, it's, it's something I've never really um, dove into. Um, I've always stayed with the, 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 the infinite banking style kind of stuff, the high cash value life insurance. Um, I've never really delved into the world of velocity banking. I think I know enough about it to be dangerous, quite frankly. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't even be able to articulately explain to somebody all of the nuanced benefits of, mm -hmm. of velocity banking. Was there ever a time in your life where you were in a, like a lot of debt personally or has uh, debt ever been an issue uh, no no not really okay i mean that's probably why then. no yeah yeah no yeah yeah Tyler, you have been in a lot of debt yeah. so what what was a strategy you used to get out of debt was it you know just snowball and making extra payments yeah mainly i use more like the snowball and i increased my income increase your income, income. yeah, yeah. I, worked on this. I mean, it was when I was in college and I mm. you know, was learning. So I picked up two part-time jobs and then okay. I realized like, I can't keep going down that path, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was... So it was a matter of grinding, hustling, and then boom, once you're done, now you're just like, now you're like, I never deal with debt. Right. Yeah. Okay. It took me a long time to get well, out. What about you, Seth? Was there ever a time when you're like, we're having a lot of debt? Yeah. And then like, and, what uh, came first? And then... Yeah. Um, debt is still something I'm working through okay yeah. so um but definitely in control of it right uh, mm -hmm. versus there was a time where it was out of control you know and so um but um uh, for me focused until until i met you and learned about velocity banking it was really just that snowball okay and really focusing on increasing income gotcha. like, primarily focusing on income got yeah. it um, so i'm the weird one here because when i was 18 uh, it was around when I got my first job. And also around the time I got my first credit card, Wells Fargo, secured $300 credit card, right? Uh -huh. Used it to pay my phone bill each and every month. Nobody okay. told me to get the card. Nobody told me about credit cards. It just kind of came up. I think I was at the T-Mobile place and the guy was like, you know, you could pay this with a credit card or you want to use a credit card or debit. Uh -huh. I was like, I didn't even know what a credit card was at the time. Uh -huh. I was just like, clueless. I get it. And, you know, I think it came with cashback rewards or something like that. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I got money back for paying this bill. I could have used the cash, right? Mm -hmm. Or use the card and get a little money back for the same bill. So mm -hmm. somehow that was like the seed, right? Then you fast forward, I start taking on debt like any young person naturally would. Uh, particularly in my household, the way I was taking on debt was out of necessity whether it was mom or stepdad, somebody always needed money in my family. Mm -hmm. And so I was the one that would save the pennies, nickels and dimes, the quarters, stack them up and then go to the machine, convert it into cash, give it to my family. Here you go, here's food for groceries, here's food to cover the car payment, whatever it was. Yeah. But then I was like, what if I go to the bank and maybe ask them for a, a higher credit line? It's just like, and it just happened. Just happened, right? Yeah. And they gave me a thousand bucks. It just increased to a thousand. I was like, so now I have a thousand dollars to give to my family in the event that they need it. Mm. And then when they have the money, they can pay me back within 30 days, hopefully, and I won't pay any interest. And so, but there was times where they didn't pay me back. I was working at my job and I said, what if I dumped my income into the credit card? I don't have any other bills that can't be paid with a card. 
So then I did that, no interest, come to due date. No interest was charged, had cash back rewards, threw it on there to help bring down the balance and just mm -hmm. kept doing that over and over again. And then when they finally paid me back, it re actually replenished my savings, hmm. right? So it was like I was just kind of just parking money in a credit card. Fast forward, then I start getting into more debt because I'm like, I need to get a car or I need to, you know, I'm trying to start a business. Life I'm happens. like, yeah, yeah life yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. Totally. One day I get a personal unsecured revolving line of credit. Again, no one told me to get this. Got 3,000 bucks. Something in the mail? I think it was something in the mail or it must have been, but, I think I get but like five actually, of those a week. It's nuts. There were actually credit cards and loans and then I think mm -hmm. I just did research on online and then I saw with uh, Bright Star Credit Union, it's my local bank, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I go in there, I was like, hey, I'm looking at that personal line of credit you got. It was a nine something percent rate, okay. interest rate, 9.9. How long ago was this? This was 20... 19 okay you know cool so, no i'm sorry i'm sorry go back this is 2016 okay 2016 2015 okay. so that's a high rate yeah you know yeah then back then yeah, 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 yeah rates yeah, were extremely sure. low mm -hmm. right now it would be uh, low for that but, but i used that three thousand. i tried to invest and, and make money and do all these different things and then i'm like what if i dumped my income into the line and I noticed how it said I was at this rate, this 9.99, but I was only getting charged a dollar or four dollars or two dollars, like mm -hmm. in an entire month, it was like 20, 30 bucks. So I was kind of doing the full math. And I'm like, I don't think I'm paying nine. Let me, let me keep dumping my paycheck into here. Let's see if it reduces the rate even further. And then come to find out I'm paying like a net actual cost of like 2%. 3%. It's lower than mm. anything else, right? Mm. So then, you know, I had other debts. I had a personal loan. And I saw that that loan was charging me more than what the rate said. The rate was 10 point something. But when I look at the longevity of that amortized loan, I'm actually paying 27% over the long haul. Right? Wow. Because it's amortized, yeah. right? Versus the simple interest, it's calculated daily and it needs time to accrue. The interest needs time to accrue. So if you don't give it time, no interest will accrue. All right. So it, it just like, and then finally YouTube comes along. <laughs> Boom, I see it, Velocity Bank, mm -hmm. you know? And then shortly after, Infinite Bank. What year did you start your YouTube channel? 2018, okay. August, cool. right? Yep. So go back 2017 is when I discovered Velocity Banking, hanging okay. out at a, at a real estate group. Nice. Renatus is, is, oh, the, yeah. is the group. <laughs> nice. So shout out to Renatus. I always yeah. give him credit. Yeah. Um, did over the years I've done deeper research. So the origin of velocity banking, I think, is called mortgage acceleration. I think that's mm -hmm. the, the term that's used. Comes from Australia. Guy named Harsh Gill, right? He, um, along with in collaboration with banks in Australia, came up with the HELOC. Home equity line of credit, okay, or or um, offset account, and he has a book, and so that's where it originated. Then he comes to the U.S., introduces it to the, I guess, different groups sure. or bank systems and mm -hmm. companies like Renatus and others adopt it. Then yep. they change the name. Boom, Velocity Bank, yeah, it becomes paycheck a market parking, thing, right? cash flow hacking. Like it's yeah, like, it's just it's no different than if you're right. banking, cash flow banks, so you bank like, on yourself, become like it's all yeah. The same so stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. people are doing it. this whole time. I'm doing it, not even yeah. knowing it's a thing. It's awesome. So then I start creating content, right? mm -hmm. and then before you know it, I'm like seeing all the negative. I'm like, why are people calling this a scam? Where's mm. the scam? Because, mm. right, again, from my perspective, I was doing it you before were, I knew yeah, it was Yeah, and thing. you loved it, right. And I was like, oh my God, I'm paying like nothing. I'm talking to my girlfriend, I'm talking to my mom. I'm like, hey, you could do this. You could pay off all your debt right now. Mm -hmm. Just throw it in this line of credit and you can reduce the interest rate. That's really, your, that's how you pay your debt off faster. Sure. Plus increasing your income like Tyler did. Plus yeah. working hard. Plus yep. just adding all those things that we already do. It's just financial efficiency. Is financial really efficiency, yeah. Yep. That word efficiency, love it, because I got that from, from Caleb, so shout yep. out to him. Um, I think he got that. Got that for <laughs> 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 Love it, love it. So here I am five years later, 
just case study after case study after case study and more often than not I'm showing people how to take their high interest rate debts mm -hmm. and pay zero it's a complete offset yeah because whatever debt I'm paying off you were gonna pay that interest anyways yeah so now all I did was basically I tell people initially we're just consolidating debt mm -hmm. but now we don't want to stop there and just keep making a monthly payment rather drive your entire income into a line right okay so that's kind of like what it's been like and the case study on the board here is just kind of showing uh, a UPS driver husband uh, or no he's got a girlfriend and I, but I think they're gonna get married he's about to retire in three years from, okay. from UPS so goal is to live in Puerto Rico buy a restaurant a goal yeah buy a restaurant over there drink some Coquito and the mojitos. It's and funny. I just we just had a client come through who is a FedEx driver. Yeah, and he just retired to southern Mexico. So it's nice. Like, so. <laughs> is there something with drivers wanting mm -hmm. to get out of the U.S.? Yeah, I don't know. And then he wants to get you know have a little Airbnb yeah. business going on yeah. over there. Yeah, that's he's awesome. He's got he's got two properties here in the U.S. A primary and a rental. Cool. That one on the board is a rental, so he's got one hundred twelve thousand owed on it. Twelve oh four. He's making eighteen or nineteen hundred or so from the rent. Okay, so he's um, cash flowing. Cash flowing, and it's a four percent amortized. Cool. He just applied at PenFed Credit Union. Okay. Which is, um, I believe, the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than Silicon Valley Bank that just went under. So you know, I also educate my clients. I educate my clients on, hey, you know, pay attention to the health of the banks that mm -hmm. you want to do business with, and Typically, from what I've experienced, banks that do offer HELOCs, PLOCs, credit cards, revolving accounts that mm -hmm. require more money in reserves to maintain those accounts, typically have a better uh, health from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side, we've also seen from 2013 all the way to 2022, credit unions, small banks, community banks are just disappearing. Little by little, oh, totally. Left and right. Mm -hmm. I think there was just under 7,000 smaller banks in 2013 2022 i just put an email out to my uh, clients and my uh, subscriber base we're down to less than five right? it's like 4900 local That's banks crazy. so what i tell my audience is i'm like look velocity banking just got a little bit harder in terms of finding the tools that are out there mm. still possible we're in an environment where the rates are are high we're still making phenomenal results because as the rates go up so do your amortized loans yeah and the average car payment is like 900 dollars now oh it's absurd six, 650 on one and 720 on another what's wrong yep. with you <laughs> so when i'm talking to clients conversation tyler when i'm talking to clients i'm saying hey if you get a heloc you get a p-lock you're able to control your your payments and cash flow that much yeah more effectively and even if you're in a bad situation you're able to buy time yeah. at a lesser cost than you would getting a loan and having that interest front loaded in advance mm -hmm. right so for this client he's looking at pen fed the rate pretty high 8.75 percent sounds high mm -hmm. Forty five thousand is the credit limit that they um conditionally approved them for so now he just has to go through the process um and we've got four debts that we're looking at eliminating. He's got a prosper loan. The payment is 611, 16. So I'm so the assuming cash flow of that is pretty nasty. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, ass I'm assuming the interest rate is high on that. It's gotta be high and it's probably like a 10 five, yeah, five year duration to, I, and a high interest rate kind of deal. Exactly. So I'm, I, I told him, I said, get me the interest rates on those loans, but just yeah. we were just running the numbers and I was like, look, more than likely. All of the rates on your credit cards and the loan is higher than the 8.75. So just from a consolidation yeah. point of view, yeah. you're going from a higher rate to a lower rate, but we don't stop there, right? So if you add up the numbers, the loan 9,383, one credit card 1,026, for those that may not be able to see it, I'm just reading it out. Uh, credit card 1,830, another credit card 6,316, and he's paying 200, He's actually probably overpaying on mm -hmm. some of them. To pay him now quicker, but to pay him now still quicker. not enough. Not doing much. Yeah. So I said, look, the total cash flow, you add up all that, and it's like 
I don't know, let me look at my notes real quick. And he's quick. not actively using those credit cards right no. now. They're just there. He's trying to pay them just down. Just there. Just trying to pay okay. them off. Cool. So the uh, the cash flow gain, if we were to eliminate them in one shot, it would be one thousand two hundred eleven dollars and sixteen cents. So right. he increases his cash flow by that much instantaneously. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. So how do we go about doing that? Well, with the forty-five thousand dollar credit line, mm -hmm. this is how much we have to use and leverage. Mm -hmm. I've got some rules that I share with my clients. I'm like, look, this is what has worked for me personally. The math usually always kind of lines up. Okay. I take cash flow times twelve, where they're currently at. So his income is eight thousand fifty, spending five thousand three ninety-eight twenty-five, cash flowing two thousand six fifty-one seventy-five. These are about as accurate as we're gonna get maybe a little fluctuation here and there. So I say, okay, we take that conservative cash flow. So 2651. I'm, yeah, so when I'm working with clients, I underestimate income, I overestimate expenses, I underestimate cash flow purposely, leave room for error, so that we know how to properly uh, leverage debt so we don't get into any, you know. Do you have a rule as far as percentage that you overestimate and underestimate by, so, or do you just kind of take it case by case? Case by case, but my general rule is typically UPS drivers are so, or drivers, truck drivers, I'm like, you have a salary, plus there's overtime, mm -hmm. bonuses, don't even give me that. Mm -hmm. Just give me your base pay. Mm -hmm. So I usually operate off people's base That's, pay. Yeah. That's probably the most consistent I could get. Okay. When it comes to their expenses, their miscellaneous dining out, I say just round up. Round up, not down. <laughs> yeah. Round yeah, yeah. up. Yeah. What's your highest month? Give me your yeah. highest month on each expense. And it usually brings their cash flow way down. And what do you tell people that like maybe they're having more trouble like budgeting? Do you tell them to get a software? How do you tell them to break that down? Break so the beautiful thing about this concept when it comes to budgeting, none of my clients actually budget. We just simply look at where did your money go? From the last 90 days up to a year, we look at history. So history tells us this is where you're spending money. This is how much you're spending, and this is the average. Food, right? lots of food. So I'm like, it's up to you. <laughs> so I, I, I leave it to the client. I'm like, look, it's up to you if you find yourself overspending on food and or, or food, dining yeah, out, Uber Eats, whatever. Do they send you statements or do they do like? Yeah, they send me statements. They'll do that. Yeah, so or, a, a or they just do it their own. That kind of has like a list of things to think about, and then help them to kind of brainstorm and like you know and then you separate your actual debts like which are loans credit cards etc versus expenses those are two different things what's so your thoughts on like mint and quick and silence? oh yeah I, I so I, i'm like guys clients whatever works yeah. mint uh why and you need a budget if you're familiar with that one um yeah. i'm like okay. whatever works I just need the real numbers. Don't give me fake numbers because usually a budget is fake numbers. Yeah. You're budgeting for something. I don't want that. I need what's yeah. actually happening. Yeah, yeah. So I'm big on that. From there, my rules are we don't leverage more than two thirds or 66% of what we of have available book. credit. Available credit on the credit, credit level. Oh, okay. Yeah, the okay. 45K. Got it. The only reason why I would violate that is if your cash flow times 12 is more than two thirds of the line. Okay. But even then, it why? may, not, may not be necessary, right? I don't know why. The only reason why we would violate that rule is if there's a cash flow opportunity to mm -hmm. chunk a significant amount because sure. of the cash flow potential that's, that's there. So in his case, our chunk, if we add up these four debts, because the only two other debts he has is a mortgage, mm -hmm. his primary and his rental. So I'm like, okay. the, I'm like, those are, no point in trying to go after it right now. You're not going to get the cash flow. So yeah. go for the lower debts. Mm -hmm. And this incorporates debt snowball, debt avalanche, yep. cash flow index, which is something I'm yeah. actually embracing yeah, even more. It. Totally. Um, not even realize I've been doing cash flow index forever. No. But cash flow index actually is a formula that, whereas with my clients, it's just what's up here. It's the, the gift that I have. I just tell my clients, I'm like, I know it's a gift. God gave it to me. I'm able to look at people's debts and I can just see which ones we need to go after. But cash flow index formula proves my kind of thinking where it's like you take the balance, you divide it by the monthly payments, you get a number. If that number's below 50, right? Boom. Got it. Go yeah. in the order. And usually every single time it lines up with what my choices were for velocity banking. But what I tell people is when we're deciding which debts to go after, I'm looking at cash flow first 
interest saving second, balance third, but then all three simultaneously. And that kind of throws people under a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but cash flow index really, really helps. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great way to kind of decipher. Exactly. Yeah. So add them up, the chunk amount, that's the terminology we use. Yeah. Taking a chunk, a lump sum out of the HELOC of 18,555. And you pay off the four debts. You now have that cash flow that is going to be parked in the HELOC. So now you don't have a payment no longer on the HELOC because your paycheck is the payment mm. and it's being submitted in advance well before the due date. So two things that is going to happen with, with banks. Some banks will say, okay, Denzel, you don't owe a payment for the next four months because of how much you paid up in advance mm. or three months or two months usually. Some banks will say, you only need to pay us the interest on the due date each and every month, which is fine because mm -hmm. it's the same interest that you're paying over here. Mm. I'm just moving it to the HELOC, paying significantly less, and then offsetting it all together. I see Tyler's face. She's like, I'm just trying to get the numbers worked out of my head. I'm trying to get it figured out. So here is how you calculate your borrowing costs, right? Because that's the key. You have to know, does this actually make any freaking sense? Let the math show it. So the formula on ca uh, calculating simple interest, you take the balance times it by the interest rate, divide by 365, um, uh, and you'll get the daily borrowing costs for however long you owe however 18, many days you have it however long you owe 18,555 so when i tell the client i'm like look the borrowing costs on 18,555 is yeah. four dollars and 44 cents how do we bring that to zero per day per day i'm like how do we bring that to zero i'm like the, the way we do it is on the day you make the chunk it's going to be the same day or the day after you get paid right so if i get paid on a friday that's the day that I have the most money in my checking account. I want to make the chunk that same day. Mm. Because, like guess what? If I take 18555 at 8 o'clock in the morning, pay off the four cards, it'll usually register same day when you do it in the morning rather than at night. It takes a while for it to process. Your paycheck, say he's bi-weekly, so say 4K. Mm -hmm. Dump it right into the HELOC same day that 444 is not gonna register. It goes down, and so then you use the HELOC to live off for a period of time, but your your average daily balance is lower, so it saves the 444, it cuts it to like three bucks, or three, 350 or something of that nature. So here is the overestimated average. There are some calculators out there that will give it more accurately, but I like to, again, overestimate for like hmm. room for error. So I say, look, you do the highest balance, which is your chunk amount, Yep. The lowest balance, which is income goes in, mm -hmm. so 10505 right? And then the ending balance, which is after all bills came out for that month, cool. you'll end up at 14692.09 if all the numbers are the same. Wow. So the borrowing cost on 14 k is $3.52. So you reduced your cost yeah. per day. On 10505 it's $2.51. Uh -huh. So here what we do, we add the three, divide by three, your average daily borrowing cost is three dollars and forty nine cents a day. Times that by thirty days, you're paying one hundred four dollars and seventy cents. I guarantee you, you're paying way more over there. Uh, yes, he is. Right, infinitely more. Just on that six eleven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's awesome. Right. So, um, that's. I mean, that's amazing. So, is there another step to think about for this? I mean, or like, what are the tools that you yeah, utilize? How do you, how do you manage it? Like, so one of two ways some there are some really expensive financial softwares out there that can help with this the audience that i'm talking to are in their 40s to 55 plus they have no problem using pen and paper right. and so they love that and so you do it's like literally literally handwriting uh this every month and managing it like that like that or some will take an excel spreadsheet i have some I have a, quite a few okay. IT clients and that will literally create the formulas in Excel that I give them. They put it in the in the Excel and then they just plug in their numbers right. and they illustrate it. And it says, okay, well, this is what it should look Tyler's like. Can, Tyler's <laughs> like, I sense an and opportunity. That's, yeah, that saves a ton of time. It does save a ton of time. Yeah. But if you're old school, this is what you would do. And you literally go month that's by awesome. month 
And once you oh. once you've mapped it all out, you go about you go to about the line is paid off, right? So you say, okay, this should be paid off in about four months, five months, six months, whatever it is. Um, and then on a, on a day to day, the rule is when my paycheck lands, I'm dumping it right into the HELOC. When bills are due, the day before the bill is due, I'm pulling money money back out to the checking account to pay the bill that has to be paid with a checking account. Now to make this even sweeter, you get a credit card with cashback rewards and run all those bills that can be paid with a credit card. We just paid off three. So I'm like, dude, pick any one of those three to the client. I'm like, whichever one is giving you the highest cashback rewards, pick that one. That's awesome. Run your gas, your food, yep. your phone, but anything and everything. Get wife on board, get whoever you can on yeah. board in the household to run all the bills to that central yes. location. I can bring 104 and probably get 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks in cashback cash rewards back and spend every month. So it brings the borrowing costs, cuts that in half. So if you did the math, on 104, 70 times 12 is less than 1,623.56. That's, mm. that's 8.75% over one year, right? So when we did the math on, on this particular client in just under a four to five month period, the total interest is overestimated 356 around 356 bucks. So if you did the math, like what is the interest rate on 356 from 1600? I'm like, dude, you just cut it below four at least. You're like in the low threes, maybe even less than that, especially when you tack on the cashback rewards. Now you're at, now you're borrowing at literally one, two percent net in just four to five months. The debt is gone, your credit goes up, right? and you're in more control with that home equity line of credit or PLOC, right? So what if you had the, if you had the preference of between a HELOC and a PLOC, which one would you? Typically, we like to go with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come over here, come over here, yeah. <laughs> I like it, I, I'm gonna put Tyler on. Love, love it, love it. All right. All right, come in a little bit more, yeah, you're okay. good. So your question is if someone has to decide between a home equity line of credit or a PLOC, typically if I'm dealing with a homeowner, we're gonna wanna go with the HELOC, okay. especially if there's equity. HELOCs tend to have a lower interest rate than a personal line of credit. Although this one- Doesn't um, seem too bad right now. It, yeah, this one is actually pretty high with PenFed, but he applied. So I'm like, once you apply, you, know, you might get denied when you try to go to all these different banks. So I'm like, just stick with what we got. We can work with that. Uh -huh. But I'm pretty sure had he done more research, we probably would have found another bank in his state. And do you help people with that? Yeah. Okay. So on my YouTube channel, as I'm talking to you guys now, I tell them all the time, don't just apply at the first bank that you see. Okay. Do your research, right? Do your due diligence and let's compare all the different rates, the terms, the opportunities. So I have clients with personal line of credits today around seven and a half percent right okay. but in his case it just you know he came to me already with half, the approval yeah, so i was like, like half, all right i'm just gonna work with that okay uh, but typically if you're a homeowner we tend to lean more heloc because they typically have lower rates if you don't have a home you don't have a choice you have to go with a personal line of credit or credit card yeah so how would this work um i don't know if we want to stick on this area like i'll yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll give you another case study right here, right now. <laughs> but like when you, you mentioned uh, in the beginning, like, you know, he's got the two mortgages, but if you had like a, like an auto loan or something, you know, like a, a regular auto loan, or well, that's like the first thing that comes to my mind. The second thing is for the people that maybe they don't have like consistent income, you know, maybe they were commission based or, you know, so, so they have those, these, this extra cash flow is, Maybe on a quarterly basis or something like that. What do you, what do you recommend when people are in that type of situation? So all of the rules still apply when I well, work with people who are sales, commission driven. I, I go, I'm like, what was history? What did history look like? I go 90 days up to a year back, right? Okay. And I try to look at that base. I'm like, based on their cost of living, because now I have the history. I'm like, well, I know you have to make at least this much per year, right? I said, and then I look at uh, people with fluctuating income, for those that are watching, I say, okay, what was your worst month? Denzel, I only made $200 cash flow in January or 500. 
So I use that number. He's like, yeah. but my cash flow could be 4,000. Right. I'm like, okay, no big deal. I'm still going to go off of the two or the five, the lowest cash flow months or the, the averages of the previous months going back 90 days up to a year. So if you cash flow four grand, one, five, like I'm going to add all them up, divide it by 12. It's going to give me that safe number for the, for the leveraging part. Right. Gotcha. Okay. What'll happen though is someone will make the chunk. Let's say same chunk, eighteen thousand. Yep. And one month he brings in eight. The next month he brings in four. Next month he brings in seven. So even though the cap, the 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 damage has already been done, the debts are gone. We got the cash flow immediately. Right. And now it's just a matter of doing velocity banking on the tool itself, bringing that borrowing cost extremely low. Right. Okay.